Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Let us discuss the solution of the problem count pairs in an array divisible by k. So in this problem we are given an array and a positive integer k and the task is to find the total number of pairs that means two values whose sum is divisible by k. So we need to find the number of two values whose sum is divisible by k that is Suppose the first value is x and the next value is y. Then when done with modulo k, then the value would be 0. So, we have number of jodi. That means, jodi means pairs. That means, two number nikalne hai, jinka sum divisible by k. Okay. So, the first problem can be solved like this. That we would try to club this two with any other values. So, we would first try to club 2 with 2 and yes, it is an eligible pair, okay. This 2 and this 2, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, now we would operate on index which, so that we would be able to differentiate also. So, index 0 and index 1, these are eligible pairs. Then index 0 and index 2, 2 plus, 2 plus 1 that is 3, 3 is not divisible by 4. Then 0 and 0 and 3 okay 9 is also not divisible by 4 then 2 plus 5 7 is not divisible by 4 2 plus 3 5 is not divisible by 4 then we move on to the next value that is 1 so we would check on 1 1 plus 0 okay 1 plus 0 so 1 plus 0 then we have here also we have no other values that is divisible because we have already checked for this too so we would keep forward with this. Next we have 1. So if we have 1, we would try to find 3. That is this plus this. Okay. So 1 plus 7, 8. So first we would club 2, index 2 and index 3. Then we would index uh, club index 2 and 4. But 6 is not possible. 1 plus 3 is possible. So 2 and 5 itself. So yes, it is checked. Then we would go to the index 3. Then we would standard index 3 that is 7. 7 plus 2, 9 is not possible. 7 plus 2 again 9 is not possible. 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. That is 3 plus 2 is again possible. So we would move on this side also. It is 3 and 4. And 7 plus 5 is equal to 12 which is again possible. 7 plus 5 itself. Then 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. 10 divided by 4 is not possible. Remainder would be 2. In the same way, let us move to 5. So for 5, if we move to 5 plus 2, 7, this is not possible. 5 plus 2, 7, not possible. 5 plus 1, 6, not possible. 5 plus 7 is possible. That is why it would be 4 plus 3. Okay. And here it would be 3 plus 4. So if you observe that there would be 10 values. Okay. We, we would just move forward and we would find 10 values. But what I want to say is that we are counting each pair twice that is 0 and 1 and again 0 1 0 okay we can prohibit this count by standing at this position and instead of checking all the elements we would just check on the forward element and this problem would be solved okay like we would stand at 0 and then we would check for all the values okay then we would stand at 1 and, st and instead of starting from the front we would start from this point only and we would try to move front okay now for each element, we are moving in the worst case n minus 1 element and then n minus 2 element, then n minus 3 element. So, we can say that for each element, for one element, we are doing n operation. So, for n element, we would be doing n square operation. So, the time complexity of this approach is n square itself. Fair enough? So, if we observe the constraints then if we do n square okay that is 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 that is 10 to the power 10 which is greater than 10 to the power 8 so we would definitely get a time limit exceeded so if we observe the value of 9 then the upper bound is 10 to the power 6 
So if we do 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 10 to the power 10 to the power 6, then that would be 10 to the power 12, which is greater than 10 to the power 8. So we would be definitely getting a time limit exceeded error. Okay. So we need to think of something else. So instead of instead of this value, what we can do is we can store the values. Okay. So if if it was given that x plus y is equals to k, if it was given something like this. Then we would have done 2 plus 2, then again 1 plus 3 is equals to 4. We can do like this, okay? And we can know how many values are there, okay? Like suppose for 2, there are other 1 value, 2 value, 3 value, okay? So this 2 can be clubbed with this, this 2 can be clubbed with this, this 2 can be clubbed with this. And when we would reach this 2, we would again club with them. So we would first count the number of pairs and then divide it by 2. Because for each pair, we are counting twice. But what do I do? If the question x plus y is equal to k, then I will open two pairs. Okay, two pairs. Lunga. And then, usko at the end, divide by two. Karunga. Because zero or one, if one pair will be then one or zero will be a pair. Banega. Okay? And we can't look on forward because we would be storing the frequency. Okay? So we know that the number of other elements would be that. Okay? Now, there are some more cases to handle to this also, but we won't discuss it in detail because this is not the question itself. The question is that we need to find x plus y modulo k would, should be equal to 0. So what we can do is, if we keep all the numbers at modulo 0, okay, like 2 modulo 4 is equals to 2, then 2 modulo 4 is again 2, 1 modulo 4 is equal to again 4. And then 7 modulo 4 is equals to 3, and 5 modulo 4 is equals to 1, and 3 modulo 4 is equals to 3. Now, see, 7 plus 1 is equals to 8, which is divisible by k, and 1 plus 3 is equals to k. We can solve this. Okay, yes, we can do it. And again, see, this can be clubbed with this. This can be also clubbed with this. Now, there are some more cases to handle. Okay, there are some more cases to handle. To handle cases are there can be many values from 0 till n minus 1. Okay, this can be the range. The num values in the array after doing the modulo, this can be the range. So now let's think from the very first that is 0. If the value is 0, okay, let's try to observe it in this way 4, 4, 4, and k's value is equals to 4. So this 4 can be clubbed with this, this 4 can be clubbed with this. Same way this 4 can be clubbed with this, this 4 can be clubbed with this, this 4 again this and this. And after counting all the values divided by 2. Okay, this is it. So this 4 can be clubbed with all other 4s. So I can say that this 0 can be clubbed with all other zeros. All other 0 means total number of zeros minus 1 itself. So I can say that this 0 multiplied with total number of zeros would tell me the number of pairs itself. So if it is 0, we would multiply it with number of zeros minus 1. Then there is one more value. That is suppose the value is equals to 4 and this value is equals to 2, this value is equals to 2. If this is the scenario, then this one would again count itself. This one would again count itself. Okay, but this is not the value because we would get only one pair. But instead of that, we are getting two pairs at each step. So what we would do is when the number when x is equals to y okay when x we need to find x plus y modulo k and when x is equals to y then we would subtract one after finding this is what we need to do okay because we would get one value more itself okay so now the problem is very simple we would hash the values in an unordered map and then we would count the number of values at the end just divide it by two and return it okay I hope I am clear till this point. If I am not clear till this point and how we are coming to on conclusion till this point, consider stopping at this point, raise a query in the comment section and I would reply to it and then you can move forward. Okay. Fair enough. That is the best approach. Now we would start the implementation itself. Okay. So we need to return long, long. So we would just initialize long, long answer is equals to zero. Then we would initialize an unordered map, okay, with an average time complexity 
of big O of 1 that is constant itself. Then what we would do is for int i is equal to 0, i is less than n and i plus plus and then we would hash the values map of a of i and this would be plus plus that is increment the value. Okay. But before doing that, we need to do the modulo. That is A of i modulo is equals to k. We would assign the values in the array itself because we need that value from the array. Then we would use a for loop. Int i is equals to 0, i is less than m and i plus plus. Then we would find that if A of i is equals to equals to 0. Or we can just do a not operation also without doing and this would be there also. This is a shortcut to use them. Then answer plus x equals to m of 0, then we would add subtract minus 1, okay? And then we would continue from this. We don't need to move forward, okay? Because the 0th case is handled. The next case is we would find the difference itself. Difference is equals to k minus a of i, because all the values would range from 0 till n minus 1. So definitely this difference would be a positive value. Then answer plus equals to m of diff that is the difference itself. Okay. Now, if difference that is x is equals to equals to y that is diff is equals to equals to a of i, then we need to subtract one. Okay. Answer minus minus. Okay. We need to subtract once at the end whatever we have got because zero and one. So I'm just, I would just telling you. Suppose this is. 1 and this is 2 and k is equals to 3. So if we stand at this point, then the difference would be 2 and we would club this value. So I would say 1 plus 2. Then if we stand at this point, then I would again club this value. That is why this is this is 2 plus 1. The same value we are calculating again and again. This is just like counting the pairs 0, 1 and 1, 0. So we need to count only one pair. That is why we would divide it by 2. In the same way, we would divide answer divided by 2 itself. Let us compile and run and see if we can get correct output for the sample test cases or not. Yes, we are getting the correct out of sample test case. Now let us submit this. And yes, we got an AC. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.